Room for Rent episode 17, Ben Thompson is here. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Yes, we're very happy to have you. Uh, ben is a comedian, a writer, <laughs> former college athlete, Hottie, Hottie McCotterson. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to hype you up here. He's single. Uh, you could have stopped at the first He lives one. on the west side. No, I just, uh, he's blonde, naturally blonde. Yeah. I am not. Uh, You're not naturally blonde? I mean, I'm the, I, my hair is probably as dark as yours, maybe a little darker. It's the darkest shade of blonde before you're brunette. So okay. a lot of people get really mad at me when I explain that because they don't think that's a thing. It's a thing. Isn't that just what dirty blonde is? Yeah, it's like dark blonde. Like, okay. I'm not a brunette, okay? I dyed, <laughs> okay. I dyed my hair. So sorry. I dyed my hair brown Uh not that long ago, five or six years ago, and it was such an awful experience. Why did you dye it brown? Just for something different. Th just, see, that's just, the thing that women just, do that I don't understand. Just, like, I get like having a look and when I stick to what, it, where they do. Men grow facial hair. That is so much different. That is so much different. How? Because it's natural. Sort of. It's because e every woman that's like, I'm going to change the hair color that I've always had, always regrets it. And talks about it like it was the worst decision they've ever made in their entire life. I don't know about that. Some people like All it. All six girls that I know. I think women who go blonde always like it. But women who are blonde who go brunette, it's a whole... You become invisible to the world. But women so rarely go blonde late. They usually go blonde early when they're still, you know, like developing their personality. So they stick with it. Like it's rare you see a woman who's like, who's like 35. It's like now I'm going blonde and they're know. doing okay. But I'm going to say I've gotten to know you better in the last year. Like we've known each other. <laughs> <laughs> we've known yeah. Uh, we've known each other for, I don't know, five years or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. But I've gotten to know you a lot better in the last year because you've just decided to open up to people. Like you used to be very close off. You're opening I did? up. Oh, yeah, you're very close off. Well, I know I'm always pretty closed off. I didn't know I've But you're opening up more. Like, I know that you like to sing Grease yeah. songs from Grease. Like, he's straight, but he likes to sing show tunes with a 59-year-old man. <laughs> Tommy and I love each other very yeah. deeply. Uh, and, but you have interesting views on women. Like, you have this whole <laughs> thing about women. You're like, yeah, you know, that's what women do before they develop their personalities. They go blonde. <laughs> I'm like, who thought? That. You made it sound like I meant that offensively. Like you did that in like a chauvinist voice. Because you I got didn't... really kind of angry. I, there was that anger. Yeah, you're like I just don't think women have developed the personalities. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, not what I meant. Uh, you that... probably need to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> that is the hard part. It's like any. T I have. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I have plenty of thoughts on women. <laughs> we but know it's just, you're it's a white just, man. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like in my DNA. But it's just like from Jesus Christ. It's just from you know observation but you can't have an opinion on women without it being a problem so that's why no, I you usually just don't, don't talk need to have it. opinions on women at all i'm just kidding you I'm not, I'm not you kind of are a fascinating species that i am constantly in awe of back at you bro <laughs> See? back at you we were just talking about how men can't multitask no at all no not even. i pretend i can but and i, I can't. and i said i think it's because you you guys don't bleed and I think that's actually a pretty good kids. theory. Yeah. I mean, I think it's probably right. But we're also just like so good at like doing nothing. We're so good at doing nothing. Yeah. I I love it when I talk to men and they're like, and I'll say, okay, I talk, I talk to men and I say First to them. First of all, tight. Yeah. And uh, I'll go, so what do, you, what, what, what do you think about when X, Y, Z happens? And they go, nothing. And they're so sincere. Like, they're like, yeah, nothing. I'm like, you're not sitting there. Wheels aren't turning. Nothing is happening. And they're like, nope, nothing. I was like. I get that all the time. When they're like, you okay? I'm like, great. <laughs> like, you look really mad. I'm like, nope, you're just like, waiting. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're making me angry. Yeah, now that I have an opinion on you, uh, <laughs> now pretty pissed. <laughs> not that you're bothering me. Oh, my. Have you ever lived with a woman? A girlfriend or anything like that? No, just no? my mom. Just. You're just out there. Just me, just me and a bunch of dudes. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, I, we had you on. You said you had some roommate stories. Uh, hopefully, you came with some good ones because if you come and bomb on my podcast, <laughs> I swear if, you, if, it, if I have a straight white man on and I lose subscribers. How many straight my, white men have you had on? How many? Bit, bit, bit. <laughs> uh, I, 
don't know enough probably like you said that like it was too enough many. that my mom will be like you know you have a lot of white people on the show and i'm like what do you care i have what? i try to have a variety yeah. of people on. it depends on availability yeah you know <laughs> yeah. it's all dependent on availability but i have, yeah, I have it's a also, mix of people it's also on. who you know and most yeah. of the people you know are comedians and White men think they're really funny. They do, and they like to ask to be on podcasts and everything. Yeah, people I mean, ask it's you to be whole, on podcasts. What people ask you to be on the podcast? Oh yeah, I mean, people have asked me to be on the podcast that don't know what the podcast is about. Oh Jesus! They're That's like, hey, just... I want to be on your podcast. I'm like, cool. You know what it's about? And they go, no, no idea. No, just they wanna, just... it just looks really cool. It's, yeah, it's produced so well. I'm like. No, it's because okay. they want to talk about themselves. Yeah, I also love it when people cancel. I'm like, you know, I'm paying for this. Like, this costs me money. But yeah, that's a shame. Anyway, that's shitty. So. But no, I do have, because, I mean, look, yeah. When you play sports throughout college, those become, like, all of your friends. Yes. Post-college. So when you just live with dumb athletes for your whole life, you live with dumb people. Yeah, that do funny things. Like, athletes are very funny people. Yeah. You, not so much, but most <laughs> athletes. No, where did you, okay, so tell me again where you went to college. Uh, the University of Redlands. Okay. Which where is did... on the way to Palm Springs in San Bernardino County. Oh, okay. I mm -hmm. didn't realize that's where it was. It's, so... You know what it is? It's like uh, it's like Linfield. It's, the, it's like a Linfield. Yeah, that's fine. That or... doesn't mean anything to me. I get it, but. Oh, okay. I'm I know I know where. George Fox. I know where Redlands is. Like, I know that area. I just yeah. didn't. I when I I'm think just trying Redlands, to get other D3 schools that were around I think Portland. Redwoods. This is where the blonde part of me kicks in. And I'm like, oh, Northern I've California, that, Southern Oregon. I've gotten Redding. that my entire life. Redding. Or, yeah, yeah. People go yeah. like, oh, where'd you go? I go, Redlands. And yeah. they go, oh, cool. Northern California? And I go, nope. And they go, you sure? And yeah. I go, you're thinking of the tree. And they're like, never mind. Yeah. 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 So you've been in Southern California since you graduated high school, basically. Yeah. Which I didn't realize. It explains the hair. For My sure. hair's always been like this, though. Your hair's always been long like that? Yeah, for wow. the most part. Yeah, I, I mean, you. I had the Bieber cut growing up. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, but no, my hair's always... But it it's funny because, yeah, people that aren't from SoCal, they're like, oh, you're you're a surfer bro for sure. Yeah. And then people in SoCal are like, you're just trying to look like you're from SoCal. No, you look like, like you are. I you, guess you I'm definitely adop I've do. adapted. So you went out there. So then how many of your soccer friends live here now? Like that you see i live with one of them okay um two others live live in la but most everyone went back to their hometowns ew i know right that's a f that's well because what happened is they went to school good. for four years and only played soccer and then after four years they went oh i don't have a plan so they all went back home that's crazy because usually athletic departments are very good at helping get people set up for success more so than anywhere else in the college not d3 baby not oh, D3. Yeah, D3. So you weren't that good of a soccer player, <laughs> is what you're saying. Pretty much. Damn. So no. so you live with one soccer guy now mm -hmm. on near the beach. Yeah. And then who's the other guy you live with? The other guy works with the uh, the other soccer guy. And what do they do? They're accountants. Ew, you live Not with accountants? You. Not you. It's Why? fantastic. Why? Because living with people that don't work in entertainment yeah. that are also financially conscious is fantastic. Do you have you gotten better with your money from living with them? I've always been like really fiscally Ugh, responsible. It's yawn. super annoying. I, I'm done with this. Episode. I'm so you, I'm not, you, I know. I'm like kidding. I'm probably more so than they are. I've always been that way. Have you ever gotten in trouble in your life? For anything, ever, or done anything. Yeah, but not like major. Like what? What's Nothing the worst really thing bad. you've ever done? Worst thing I've ever done? And you can't listen to this after the fact and be like, hey, can you edit that out? That's no, 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 no. I'm not going to give birth to Jeff here. <laughs> <laughs> or you. Um, worst thing I've ever done? I got in trouble in elementary school pretty bad for making fun of somebody, mm. like being really mean, mm. which now I, I'm trying to do as a career. But <laughs> <laughs> that tracks. Yeah, the one thing. Yeah, the one thing I did wrong. But like, that's the worst. Yeah. Like I or yeah, but I never got we're in very a lot of trouble. People. Yeah. Yeah. I think I it's just, because we're from the Pacific Northwest. Like I guess. you're from Washington. I'm from Oregon. Yeah. I mean, people up there do get in trouble, but it's not the same. Like, people down here are bold. Yeah. Like it's so competitive. They're so bold. It's like I went to 
uh, 11 year old rec basketball game in Pacific Palisades last night, and it was a championship game. I, I the parents lose their minds. Like yeah. if the scoreboard's off by one point. They freak they're like, out. it's two points, ref. It's two points. And you're like, dude. And it's like, you've got the guy who's like the head of WWE coaching one team and the guy that's the head of Sony coaching the other team. And you're like, don't you guys have Zoom meetings right. to be on? Like, what's going <laughs> But no, I got in trouble in um, kindergarten for being really mean to a girl. Really? Yeah, I told her that my dad was better than her dad and that my dad was going <laughs> to put. My, I said, my dad's better than your dad and my dad's going to put your dad in jail. <laughs> Because I think she was kind of a twat. And so I, I was just like, you know what? I've had enough of this bitch. Like, I'm just put her in her place. The kicker, it's not that I was just blowing smoke out of my ass trying to scare her. Mm -hmm. It was that I went to the kindergarten that was built by my dad at the company that he started. <laughs> and her dad worked for my dad. <laughs> and so I was serious. I was like, hey, guess what? You were like, I see no problem in this. Here's a little dose of reality for you. Uh, if you let don't, me check you here. You don't shape up. And then I remember they wouldn't let me eat lunch, which I think is illegal. But they were well, like... Well, they wouldn't let you eat lunch at all. No, they were like, you're oh, not yeah, going to eat lunch today. That, and I uh, was yeah. like, that doesn't seem right. But yeah. Well, We'll take care of that in time. <laughs> and then, oh, sorry. And then, don't touch um, me again, please. My um, parents came, like, picked me up for lunch. And I don't think they were, I don't think they were told, like, hey, Maria, act it up or whatever. But yeah. we also couldn't say no way, Jose, because there was a girl in the class whose dad's name was Jose. So it was, deemed, oh, so that was offensive. It was deemed, yeah, like offensive and, like, probably racist because she was Hispanic. What? That's pretty Isn't early that on. Like, that, those are no early Jose. days of. Oh, yeah. You couldn't say no way, Jose. You couldn't, uh, Make Indian noises with your mouth, okay. which that tra like that, that's fair. Yeah, and you couldn't smoke carrots. <laughs> you couldn't smoke carrots. Yeah, you couldn't smoke carrots. <laughs> you couldn't pretend. I was like, I'm not gonna smoke real cigarettes. You should be happy I'm yeah, smoking right? carrots. Like, what is the? Now I'm allergic and they'll kill me. So, you're allergic to cigarettes? To carrots. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. You're allergic to carrots. Yeah, but back to your accountant roommates. Yeah. Well, no. Like, okay, to tie it in, like I didn't grow up with like my friends weren't big troublemakers but when yeah. i came to socal and they like, started going to school with you know a lot of you know kids that come from homes that can afford to go to liberal arts college yeah like there's some there's a level there's a there's like a uh, upper and lower class of like being a troublemaker like there's a certain kids that are like i'm not going anywhere like i'm acting out I'm covering up for something, so I'm gonna like cause trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that is, that's understandable. And then there's the kids that are like, I have no consequences in my life, so I can do whatever I want. And those were the guys I went to college with that were like, oh, like I've never been held accountable for anything, and any trouble I've gotten in has never been real. So they're just assholes and they cause trouble and they're dick bags. And it's just like, I don't like these guys. So would you just watch them do that? And you'd be like, you guys have fun being dicks. I'm gonna go. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, like they'd, uh, they'd go into like the dorm and they would like, uh, they would just like fuck up a wa wash, like a la like the laundry room. Mm. Like unplug it, tip it over, fill it with water. And it's like, you're just like, isn't this hilarious? Like you're just kind of ruining they're, everyone's sunday they're like bullies yeah exactly like, and they're like but like th there's no real consequences yeah because even if they get in a little trouble their yeah. parents will come flying in mm -hmm. like we got in trouble as a soccer team a little bit and like everyone's parents like called in lawyers my parents like do you need a lawyer i'm like i'll just go <laughs> talk to them like i'm fine like yeah <laughs> yeah we're gonna be okay wow. and nothing happened so the guy that you live with now was he was not one of those troublemakers not at all because he's from montana Oh. Public school kid from Montana, so a little more. We love a public school kid. Love a public. Did school Did you go kid. to public high school? I did. Okay. So yeah, you're but, normal. But that's also Spokane. Like it's there's they it's good public schools and good golf courses. That's like where I grew up. It's yeah. just like well yeah yeah. The only private school is Gonzaga Prep that feeds into the University of Gonzaga. Oh, so it's mm -hmm. like. And then you have to go to Gonzaga. Exactly. Right. Almost went. Really. Almost because they offered me a spot on the team. And Spokane's like really far out, isn't it? Like. Yeah, away it's, from things. it's five hours. The closest major city is Seattle, which is five hours away. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I can get to the capital of Montana before I can get to the capital of my own state. So would you go to Montana a lot? Not a lot. We go to Idaho a lot. 
Because we're 30 mm. minutes from the Idaho border. Mm. Idaho's the best. Really? Idaho's a great time. Why? Because they got lakes and mountains and no rules. There it's are fantastic. No rules. I've never, well, no, I have been to Idaho because I went to a uh, Washington State University football game. You went to a Wazoo we, game? I did. I freeze my ass off. Sounds about right. Yeah, I was the sports editor of the student newspaper. And so uh, I was like, I know I can go for free yeah. and sit in the press box. I'll be warm. Mm hmm. The press box is not warm at Wazoo. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> at Oregon, it's great. God, when I used to go to Wazoo games, they didn't even have seats. They was just benches. So oh, you'd yeah. be sitting on these metallic benches, yes. just freezing your ass. Metallic off. or metal? Probably metal. Yeah, just probably straight metal. Probably just <laughs> straight. I don't know. It could be. It could be a I plastic. Thought you were say I don't metallic. Know. I was like, they have metallic. I, was, I didn't know benches for sure it was metal. And... No, no, well, but like the accounting roommates, they're cool. Like they're fine, they're good. But do they do they like date? Do they are they normal? I just feel like accountants aren't. They're super normal, but okay. I've earned it because the roommates that came before have been shit shows. Okay, they're so so dumb. So how long have you lived in this? Place? I've lived in the same apartment now. I'm on year six since I moved in two okay. weeks after graduating college, and I haven't left. Wow. Yeah. Creature Which is of habit and bizarre. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a great place. And it my, sounds great. And my neighbors are hilarious. I because that's I always say I have two roommates. I really have like 20. <laughs> because my apartment building is a giant family. It's nuts. Aww. I went to my neighbor's son's birthday party last Saturday. Look at you. Right? Being a sweet little boy. But it's not like I got an invite. They were just like, they called up. Like, it's, hey Ben. Yeah, from the from We're down the, here. From the courtyard. They're like, Ben, you want a hot dog? I'm like, sure. And I went down. Oh my God. <laughs> it's wild. You I mean, there's people that have, there's people that have been in that building since the eighties. That's cool. So it must be rent controlled. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. You can never leave. I can never you leave. Can they, never believe, leave. They won't let me. And also I can't. But it's insane. Like it's wow. a giant family. It's I mean, like in the summer, you can't go to bed. No one can go to bed before midnight. Because everyone gathers in the courtyard and plays music and gets hammered until midnight. Where is the invite? Come on by. <laughs> I would love All to. All invited. I will come. Bring some Modella. Especially once it's... You're in. Okay. I'm down. They, I'm there. Uh, any and all are welcome. And because I've met some of your neighbors, yeah, they're cool. they come to all my shows. They're yeah. my biggest fans. They pound beers too. They like, get <laughs> after it. They <laughs> they make me feel like such a bitch because they drank hard yeah and they're all like in their 50s and 60s yeah they're older they're are they the all best. retired or do they still work some of them still work and a lot of them are like blue collar people how funny would it be if you like come to find out that tommy owns your apartment building and you <laughs> didn't know <laughs> like, he probably oh, does shit. he owns like 80 apartment buildings i know but yeah it's uh yeah they're the best but no i yeah i've lived with a lot of just dumb bros like I, so I lived with. This. How did you find him though? So to begin with, my first real roommate out of school. His best, he played on a rival soccer team, okay. of ours. So he played at Claremont. I played mm, at Redlands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my best friend on the Redlands team went was best friends with his best friend on the Claremont team. So we all kind of became a group of friends, and we both were moving to Santa Monica, mm. and. Uh, yeah, this guy, What? Okay, this kid's, first of all, this kid's a genius. Insanely talented and smart by the book. Like degree in like molecular biology or something, oh, like wow. almost 4 0 at Claremont Mud Scripts, which is an insanely good school. What is, like, Mud Scripts? Yeah, it's Claremont Colleges and then they combine the, it's, it's not worth. Okay, it, it. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to put your mother to sleep for listening to this podcast unless that's <laughs> she's her goal. the only one listening. Unless so that's fine. her goal. But she, yeah. So he really he graduated from Claremont and like an insane degree, super talented. Uh, started working for this uh, company that rhymes with Red Bull and doing data analytics and like he automated his own job, like just off the charts smart. Went, but like grew up his whole life going to boarding schools because his family's mm. from the Caribbean mm. and like live on a compound in the Caribbean. And his like a compound like they're rich or a compound like compound like there is help. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Like gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Very, very wealthy family. Wow. Yeah. He's from an island called uh Dominica. Okay. A really small island. And they uh yeah, they live like the whole family lives in a single compound, like on a hill looking over yeah, wow. the entire island. It's wild. But he 
But because like he went to boarding school, he's from this tiny Caribbean island, and he's just like really book smart. His like pop culture intelligence mm -hmm. and awareness was the level of a three year old. Like had, did these are not just things he's never seen. He didn't know about Star Wars, Harry Potter, or Lord of the Rings. I was literally talking to somebody yesterday and I was like, what would you do if you're like, hey, you know that Disney thing? And I was like, no, I don't know what Disney is. And they're like, well, that would be impossible. Like nobody would ever say that. Like you, you can't. And I was like, no, what if I just kept telling you? I don't know what Disney is. I've never heard of it. I don't know what you're talking about. Who's Disneyland? And then somebody made some joke. And now you're telling me this guy didn't know what, basically didn't know what Disney was. I swear was. to God, he was like, I've never seen a Hogwarts movie. And I was like, that's Harry Potter. And he goes, what's Harry Potter? <laughs> At least he knew what Hogwarts was. I, I know. Guess. He just like something he heard. He uh, he didn't know. I mean, you're probably a better person if you haven't seen Harry Potter, if I'm being honest. That's pretty fair. He never heard of Mark Wahlberg. Oh. Um, and it was like, he never heard of the Witness Protection Program. Did he know who Bill Clinton was? I bet not. I bet not. Because that's what I would, like, when you, when you run into things like that, you start with presidents. Like, he didn't even know what POTUS meant. Like, he didn't know what it stood for. A lot of people didn't know what that meant until they started using it on Twitter, though. Like That's, that's a good point. That's a good that, point. That wasn't as common. That's fair. Okay, yeah. I'll give I'll You're give him a little that nuanced one. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but it was wow. wild because I lived with him during, uh, during the pandemic. So it was all oh. of a sudden, like, we had all this free time. And uh -huh. I was like, I'm going to get you like involved yeah like let's start you off with like what's a movie you've heard of that you've always wanted to see and he goes godfather I'm like, okay perfect love it let's show you the godfather 45 seconds in he just gets up and walks away and i'm like hey where are you going and he goes i need to get some water i'm like dude <laughs> we're 45 seconds in he goes i'll catch up like no he like didn't know how to watch a movie oh my god i was like no you have to like like this is setting up the plot and he goes, like, he's like, what's that guy's name? He goes, they haven't introduced him yet. He goes, well, how am I supposed to know his name? Goes, They're going to tell you. Like, you got to catch <laughs> Like, he didn't know like how to watch it. Yeah, he didn't know how story worked. Did he? Had he ever read books? Yeah, but it was always like, you know, he would read like, you know, whatever Malcolm Gladwell wrote that week. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah, was never reading not like, like novels or like anything. Stories. But to so that he doesn't effect. Know, he doesn't know what the hero's journey is, for exactly. sure. But, yeah, but to that effect, he like... Because he had the pop culture intelligence of a four-year-old, mm -hmm. which is, if you've ever met a four-year-old, they'll just find something they like and they go, this is my entire life now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know when a little kid watches Frozen and they have to watch Frozen like every day, every hour, sing all the songs in the car? So what did he do that with? He did that with goddamn gangster movies. Oh, wow. He would... <laughs> I mean, I kind of do that now with certain things, but go on. Have you ever eaten pizza exclusively for an entire week because of Goodfellas? <laughs> because of Goodfellas? He was like, I love pizza. He would only eat pizza. And he'd call, he'd call in to a restaurant to order pizza in an Italian accent. No. And tell him his name was Donnie Brasco. You're kidding. I swear to God. And what would they say? They would go like, could they... He was, because of course he'd seen three movies, so he, his accent was terrible. And he'd call me like, oh yeah, I'm trying to get a little margarita pizza. And they're like, okay. No, they're like, they're no. like, what's the name on the order? And he'd go, Donnie Brasco. And they'd go, oh, like the movie? And he'd go, oh shit, you've seen it? <laughs> yeah, it's a really popular movie. Oh, wow. And he did it, I, I remember, yeah, he woke me up at my six in the morning blown. once. He knocked on my door. Of my bedroom, I'm like, yeah, and he would just go, "I'm going to give you an offer you can't refuse." <laughs> Wait, <laughs> and you don't live with him anymore? That's know, a mistake. Right? <laughs> that's that's a mistake. You when could he, have written a movie about this guy. I could. This is like he left, coming to America to, uh, times a hundred. It was nuts. Yeah, it was bizarre. Oh, and we'd have crazy conversations about like. <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> I hope no one ever finds her from this. He wants. He was like. <laughs> This is going everywhere. This he is watched, going viral. So, this so is sorry. insane. He watched a video. He watched a movie that had aliens in it. Yeah. And he goes, okay, so you know how like when the aliens come to Earth mm -hmm. and it's like all the aliens have one leader. 
And it's like one planet is like one type of alien. And then they're the big one is their leader. Mm -hmm. He's like, we should have that on Earth <laughs> for races. <laughs> Yeah, like we do. It's called America. <laughs> he goes. Really funny. He here. goes. All the Asians should just have a leader. That's China. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> and he's not white, so it's not like it's coming from that place. That's crazy. It was, it was, I'm like, what are you talking about? Did he know history? Like, does he know about? He did because he was very intelligent. Or yeah. like colonialism. But he did, yes. Or any We once had a huge debate. Oh no. About he was like colonialism was a out and out good thing. <laughs> he goes, I've been to Jamaica. Are you were you living with Kanye? <laughs> I might as well have been the Caribbean guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he had an entire, argu a very, very well thought out argument. How without, he's like, I've been to Jamaica and I've been to a lot of Caribbean islands. If it weren't for the British, those islands would still be third world countries. And I was like, first of all, they still are. <laughs> They're basically still third world countries. Have you been to Haiti? Yeah, exactly. He goes, I've been to Haiti. I'm like, yeah, you clearly went from the van to the resort to the van to the restaurant. Like, you didn't actually go to Haiti. Wow. Not that I have. But yeah, it was. <laughs> but he but you're had, that kind of white he, guy. Yeah. Oh, we had a he had a we had a massive debate once about he was like, we need communism. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> it was insane. But cause, and it was the very well thought arguments. The island that he's from who who oh, I'm blanking on the word. Like what country? It's its own country. So it's not like French influence or British it's its own thing. I think it had British influence or maybe okay. it's just cuz most of his family was Jamaican, but okay. but I think it had English influence. Okay. If I understand it correctly. That's but yeah, probably but why. it was so he feels the way he feels, but God, exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's that was the other thing is you might have to bleep this one out. But he why? He because I'm gonna say a word that people don't like. Oh. Starts with an eh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, uh no, he he uh he got off the phone once and he's like, I just talked to my sister and she she just got suspended from uh, high school. I was like, What happened? He goes, We don't really know. I'm like, okay, but like, what actually happened? She goes, he goes, well, um, she got taken to the principal's office because um, she said colored people. And I went, that checks out. Mm -hmm. And he goes, why? And he goes, I was like, because that's super offensive. You can't say that anymore. That's discriminatory language. We, that that was like 40 years ago. You couldn't say that anymore. And he goes, you can't say that anymore. Keep in mind, he's black. I was gonna. That's was gonna be my next question. Yeah, he's black, and I, and his sister is black, and I was like, yeah, you can't say that anymore. On the spot, calls his mom. He goes, hey mom, did you know you aren't allowed to say colored people anymore? And he goes, she was like, no. He goes, Ben says you can't. She goes, put Ben on the phone. And then I talked to his Jamaican mom about how that's you can't say that anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, but like where he was from, that wasn't a thing. But his sister got suspended from where? From a boarding school in America. Oh. Yeah. But who, I, I wonder what the context was like. Who was she calling that to? Apparently they were talking about Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> and she's like, he's a colored class. boy. Yeah. Was, exactly. Oh my God. How confused was the teacher? Oh my God. Yeah, she's probably as confused as you were for as I long as you live with exactly. this guy. Because yeah. she was probably calling the teacher pretending to be Donnie Brasco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah. What an interesting... It was so... Every day was an adventure. I am disappointed that you did not <laughs> videotape him in a pandemic when everybody's getting on TikTok and posting really funny things right? about their life circumstances. Because well, it would come out of nowhere. It'd come out of nowhere. Yeah, but if you just went, hey, 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 hang on a second. Can you do that one more right? time? I should Can we do a take two? He would have done it. He, he would come. Know. I'd be watching TV and he'd come around the corner and he'd go, you know... One of our parents are going to die from COVID, and we don't know which. All right, I'm going to go surf. See you later. And just walk out the door. He knew how to surf? <laughs> yeah. What? I know, right? <laughs> and did anybody's parents die of COVID? No. No, nope, sure. we all lived. Yeah. <laughs> crazy all how survived. that happens. Like, I know, right? So many people lived. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It is. Did he, did he, did you guys like go out with him at all? Like, did he get girls? Like, I'd just be curious what his pickup tactics were like at a bar he should have gotten more 
very good looking fella. Mm. Very like model. Wow. Yeah. Very good looking fella. Tall. Yep. Mm. I'd say about six three. Oh wow, yeah. Yep. Built mm. like a Mack truck, you know. Mm. Racially ambiguous. How? Cause he's he's got like eight things going on. Oh. Yeah. Well, you said he was black. Well he is because like his whole one side of his family's all Jamaican, but came like they're, you know, yeah, you know, color, you know, colonialism. <laughs> yeah. I'm aware. I'm you know, aware. You know how yeah, certain yeah. people kind of muddied the no, waters. No, I had a different. Yeah, I had a different picture in my mind, but it doesn't matter. So, do you want, do you want a picture? Want me to pull a picture up? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. If it's easy. Where oh, is yeah. he now? Is he still in L.A.? Still Can, in Santa Monica. Should we get him on the pod? We'll do part two. Dude, and bring, we'll bring him, him on. on. He'll be a we'll trip. We'll bring him on just to do pop culture. He'll be a trip. He was on a... Does yeah. he know what podcasts are? <laughs> Actually? Like, if he comes in here, what's he going to think it is? Like, it's a really good question. Presidential yeah. press conference? He'll be scared by the microphone. Go... <laughs> here, I'll let you scroll. Oh, my God. He's a good looking fellow, though. If I come across your nudes, I'm going to die. Because oh, I have Instagram. so many of them. Uh, oh, Yeah. He took down all his modeling photos, which stinks. Yeah, he's a very... Wait, he was on TV? He was he, on James Corden? He got recruited off Instagram to be on Corden. <gasps> Doing what? What is he... It's some Tinder thing. They, they did a live Tinder bit. Oh. And he fucking won. Does, did he even know what James Corden was? Nope. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Had no this idea. Is... <sighs> he called me. Because I, I, I was... Uh, Looking at YouTube clips, and I saw him. I was like, "Hey, you didn't tell me you were on Corden," and he goes, "No, it was Kimmel." <laughs> I'm like, nope, it was Corden. I he went to Coachella. Oh yeah, he lives there. What do you mean he lives there? He like loves Coachella. Oh, it's his favorite thing. Of course it is. But he's like, also never heard of Billy Joel. It's probably oh, Jesus Christ. Insane, right? Uh, I mean, he's very attractive. Yeah, yeah. you're not lying. He's very, I mean, I've looked at every photo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. That's crazy. And he, and what does he do for work? He uh, works in data analytics for Red Bull. Does. Oh, for Red Bull. Yeah. Oh. Want to know how he got his Red Bull job? I can only. He, he, he shotgunned a Red Bull. I mean, like, that's. <laughs> he was. Uh, I, I know this because our mutual friend was with him. They went to Dominica, his home country, for, uh -huh. or maybe they were in Barbados. Uh -huh. I can't remember which one. Uh, and they went on a hike and they went up to go cliff jumping. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, Phil goes, Oh, shoot, I got to make a, a, a call. And he FaceTimes and it's his Red Bull interview. He does the Red Bull interview on a cliff in Barbados. Oh, that is going to get you the job at Red Bull. And then at the end of the Without interview, they go, Is there anything else that we should know about you? He goes, You guys want to come with me? And they're like, What? He jumps off the cliff into the ocean. They offered him the job on the spot. Wow. <laughs> I know what I'm doing in my next job interview. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you guys like helicopters? You want to see how Kobe died? <laughs> you ready? I need this job. They're like, man, this is a Wells Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a Walmart job. Um, <laughs> this is a stay at home job. Wow. Please don't Did do this he, stuff. He seems like somebody that is oozing accidental charisma is that 100 wow yeah he's just one of those guys yeah he's you just know, one of those guys but hollywood loves those people oh totally they love those people i yeah. mean that's basically i think in some ways like what johnny depp was you think so like yeah like kind, kind but of like he, this but weird all, misfit well that that's how he got his like, first role yeah he didn't he, he went with a friend to their audition and then the casting director was like who's that guy yeah but that's part of it. I mean, yeah. They, so it's funny though that he's he's doing Donnie Brasco <laughs> impressions because he might be the next Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> it's like we he just is. don't know yet. He's <laughs> and he wants nothing to do with entertainment, which of course you know oh, is part of it. It's because it's too easy for him. It would Probably. be too easy. Yeah. Whereas I'm over here. Well, I remember. Yeah, he crying. would. He, we <laughs> in college. You'd like, where's Phil this weekend? And he'd be like, like, oh, he's in New York modeling. He's at a shoot. And he'd come back. We're like, how's the shoot? He goes, you know, I just, I meet all these models and they're really nice people, but I just can't feel like I, I don't feel like I get a lot of depth out of my conversations with them. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop. And it's like, are they paying you? He goes, yeah, but not having, building that connection with someone just isn't worth the money. <laughs> like that's oh not God. true. He, sound, <laughs> he, he sounds like I had a roommate who was from Scotland. 
and she highly educated worked for the cdc during covid oh wow insane like she hated her life but she was the most down to earth like being healthy was easy for her kind of person where it was like eating vegetables every night and like working out and like walking to the grocery store to like pick up like she yeah. I'm just going to the market she'd have tea every night like she's very healthy yeah very down to earth like had has been to Papua New Guinea to like help people and all oh she wants God. to do is help people she's like six feet tall olive skin Scottish girl like I, just ha- yeah exactly like that where you're like hey you're here you're in uh, the entertainment hub of the world you want to go do some things? You want fun? Like try to have a good time? And she's like, "Yeah, I'm good. I don't really like it here." And I was like, "Oh." She says, "Yeah, no I'm gonna way. go. I'm gonna go back to. I don't know where she went. She moved back to England, I think, or she went to England or Scot. So, but she was Scottish. She was Scottish, and her boyfriend was South African, and like, they're both really smart. Like, he went to Oxford. Jesus. Like, he went to Oxford because." There was one kid from his high school from every class that gets into Oxford. Oh my God, really? Automatically. Like they select a, a, okay. a kid to go. Guaranteed, one kid goes and he was the kid. Wow. And I don't know what else beyond that. So, like, yeah, he went to Oxford. Like, sure, like, it was kind of insinuated that maybe he was like not completely qualified to go. <laughs> but gotcha. then he got to go get this great education. He's super smart. Like yeah. he was working at a company that was building those like artificial wave pools for people to surf at. Oh really? Mm-hmm. It was based in Venice. Tell you what, my boy would love that. Oh yeah, they have them in like Texas and stuff. Like they have them where they them where they don't have waves. They got them in Idaho now. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. So the thing that they were trying to build, the company is like they're trying to build a resort with like a hotel and a gym where you could go and work all day and then surf, huh. you know, like on yeah, your yeah, lunch yeah. break or on your, yeah, it was a whole, it's a whole, oh, I don't know how it's doing, but it was some guys in but Australia you live with the, started it. Well, a girl from Scotland. Yeah. What was the American thing that she just couldn't wrap her head around? If there was one. I uh, Probably how stupid we are. Um, <laughs> you know... I, I mean, she was so de- – she was such a good person. She was so down to earth, and I think she was just not – she was going through a hard time living here. It was COVID. Uh, yeah, you know, miserable. like her – she was in a long-distance relationship. Uh, that's Her tough. job was rough. I mean, rough. Like, I would listen through the walls, and they'd be like, yeah, you know, it's getting bad again. And, like, they had all this information before it would come out. Right. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, like – we are going to die. Yeah, <laughs> you know? of course. And, uh, the CDC. Yeah. Yeah. Every day was a five alarm fire. Yeah. It was funny too because when she found me, I had COVID. And she's like, I'd really like to move into your place. I work for the CDC. And I was like, hey, can you wait a week? Because <laughs> I just <laughs> tested positive. I'll yeah. be fine. But like, and she's like, oh, yeah, no problem. I work for the CDC, all the COVID stuff, whatever. But yeah, no, what was the American thing? I mean, she really didn't use the microwave. Uh, okay. she used the dishwasher a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah, yeah. Which there's a lot of people that don't. Um, she. What else did she do? I mean, she was just really. She loved being outside. She loved going on hikes. She go for. She'd work out every day. Go for a run. She always made vegetables. She would like roast vegetables in the oven, but she roasted them on like a really low temperature for a very long time, so they were very shriveled up by the time really? she would eat them. Yeah, and Is when her Scottish, boyfriend. That's a Scottish thing. Maybe it's a British thing. I don't know. I mean, the, her food is pretty bland, I would say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. that's always the joke that British people stole the Indian spices. They yeah. They didn't use any of them. Yeah. And uh, then her boyfriend moved here, and he lived with us for maybe a month or something, and I would watch her cook him food. It's always funny to watch women in relationships who don't know how to cook cook for men who are very hungry because they don't there's a there's a there's like a learning thing that yeah. happens because women don't eat as much as men typically and so she would cook the stuff that she would make when it was just her and then she would he moved and she would make him dinner and he would still be hungry but then also he wasn't really like there was weird stuff going on with his like visa and his money and his payment. So like they were living off of just her stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. And so he would be like, well, I'm still hungry. Like I'm going to go get a chicken. Like he would just like (laughs) roast a whole, he would like barbecue a whole chicken. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, there, 
so there was just things like that. And she'd be like, well, we don't need to do that. We have food. He's like, I'm hungry. Like (laughs) I need to eat. I have watched. So they lived together with me for a couple of months. And then my roommate before that, they lived together with me because he moved out of his place before they moved in together. And both couples at the times they were living with me were having very rocky patches in their relationship. And so I'm like, I always tell people, hey, are you unsure about your relationship? Are you thinking of moving in together, but you're having a hard time? The relationship's not in a good place. Move in with me. Because <laughs> you'll decide that living with a third person is even worse, and you'll just move out. <laughs> like, And then everything will be fine. Like, Stacy's married. I went to her wedding, and I'm sure Debbie and What's-His-Face will get married. But... That's actually a good, like, couples therapy. Like, oh, let's throw a wrench in it. And you'll see the grass is always greener on the other side. It's not fun, let me tell you. For you or for them? For anybody. (laughs) Like, I'm fine, but I'm watching everything burn in the moment where I'm like, oh, this isn't going to last. And then it does. Like, it has and it does and whatever, and that's fine. But uh, the cooking is always interesting. And then it's just, like, women always want to talk about stuff. Like, women... I don't get that. I'm not like that. If everything's good, I'm not going to complicate things. Right. But women are like, well, what about this? What about that? We need to talk about this. And then it's like they cry and it's like a whole thing. Like I get emotional, but I don't yeah. I don't need to sit and like discuss. Right. Women so, want to discuss everything. <laughs> oh, my, I don't want, I don't. <laughs> that's my mother to a T. My mom no, is like. No, I don't. And she got dealt the worst hand because she loves to talk about everything and she's like big into feelings mm. and it's me, my brother, and my dad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you didn't have any sisters. <laughs> <clears throat> no. I'm the closest <laughs> thing to a woman, woman in my family for oh, sure. Because, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I'm pretty closed off. Yeah. My brother is just like, my brother's like a Labrador retriever. Like he's just like, I'm just, I'm here to be your friend. I'm here to have a good time, (laughs) you know? And then my dad is English. So he's as closed off as it gets. And my mom's just like, I need to talk about feelings. And then it's just my brother and I body checking each other to the walls. Oh my God. And that was last Christmas. Oh dear. (laughs) How often do you talk to your mom on the phone every day? No. Oh, I do. Most I think most people do, don't they? No. You talk to your mom every day on the phone. That's actually wild. Yeah. But, okay, yeah. I and mean, I go people... in waves where I'll talk to both my parents on the phone for like an hour each. Oh, my God. Just depends, especially if I'm in the car, if I'm driving, like I call people. My mom has to schedule calls with my brother and I. Because you're not available or because it's so hard for her to get a hold of you because you don't want to talk to her? Both. Oh. <laughs> Wow. So when you talk to her, do you feel like it's forced? No. Oh, okay. I don't That's think so. Good. No, because like we because we won't talk that. for like a month. Oh my god. Yeah. That's crazy. You no, know, we'll, we'll just do a big ca- big family catch up, like wow. an hour, and then we'll call it good. That's. I would feel so out of the loop. Yeah, I talk to my. Mom. I mean, I call her like in the morning when I get up. I like what do you walk talk about? To you? What do you and your mom talk about every day? Mostly we just crack jokes. Like my parents are hilarious. That's cool. So we make jokes and like I'll send her funny things and then we'll talk about that. And then uh, are are we getting close to an hour? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. 15 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Um, Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So I call, like I wake up in the morning and I'll call her or she'll call me. And I don't even, I mean, I don't know what we talk about, like how we slept. <laughs> That's wild And then we'll talk about like what, what we have to do that day. And then I'll, sometimes if I don't talk to her on my way home from like comedy, like if it's late and I don't talk to her, I'll catch her up on the night before. Oh and I tell her like, just like I don't tell her everything. My you palms know? are getting sweaty just hearing this. Really? Uh, Why? Why? Why me? Why you? Like, why do you have to talk to your mom this much? It's not that I have to. It's because you want to. I like it. Your mom's your best friend. We make jokes. That's I mean, cool. But here's the thing is like my like my best girlfriends, I also talk to them. One of them I don't talk to as much, partly because she's a doctor. So she's like literally not available. <laughs> she's she's not, literally she's saving people's doing lives. stuff. Yeah. But like I'm in a group chat with her. And then my other friend is a mom. And like she's always sending us pictures and stuff and like she always asks me how i'm doing and i ask her how she's doing so like there's a mutual interest in just like knowing that you're having an okay day right uh but yeah my i don't know my mom we just make a lot of jokes like right now we're really into tiki stuff 
Like I'm on a big tiki binge. Tiki like tiki torches? No, not white supremacy. I, I am. Mad. I love how you. Why that's what you go to. That's what you what the, go to. Tiki taka. Like what else? No, like tiki bars, tiki mugs, tiki it's culture. It's all the same thing. Yeah, but like well, tiki torches in this country have a little bit different connotation. Well, okay. now they do. Uh, but yeah, well, we get there's like a big tiki culture in L.A. Do you know this? No. Okay, so there is L.A. and Florida. Why are you squinting at me? Like, How do I know? A big tiki it's a whole, culture? Yeah, there's, I'll send you this documentary to watch on YouTube. There's it's a documentary about LA tiki culture? About global tiki culture and like how it came to be. So it became really popular. <laughs> okay. It became really popular in the mid-century. <laughs> okay. After World War II. Well, like after Prohibition and then through World War II and it was really, really popular. And there was all this tiki stuff that started to come about, like mugs and tiki bars and like rum was like one of like big import was a big deal, right? And so there were like a part, there's an apartment building that still exists in the valley that's like a tiki themed apartment <laughs> complex. There's a tiki uh, hotel in Palm Desert that's like old. It's like anything mid-century like tiki, like that's where it started. And it's a, in and in a way, it's an appropriation of Polynesian culture. Uh, in a way, it well, is. No, it is. But it was also it was like a celebration of like uh, uh, people being able to like go to Hawaii, like air travel. Okay, it was I like gotcha. the birth of air travel allowed people to travel these places. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Like the whatever, not transatlantic, but whatever it's called. Uh, whatever. Um, Transpacific. Is that yeah? I don't know. I, I was going to say that. I didn't know if it was right. Trans-Pacific um, is to Hawaii, But then right? when Vietnam happened, this is so funny. When Vietnam happened. Vietnam is very funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. End <laughs> of sentence. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Hilarious. Uh, now time for Manscaped. <laughs> um, when Vietnam happened, the whole like grass huts yeah. vibe <laughs> reminded everybody of the war. And so they were like, no more tiki. That's it. Put it away. That's enough. We will drink wine. Like we will do something else. So all the like tiki culture and all these things that had sort of been erected through through prohibition and whatever uh were are like they went away. Like it just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Things closed down, went away. Yeah. And then after Vietnam and into the eighties, I think, you know, people start to go back into history and they're like, well, what about this? What happened to this? Or what's the deal with DVDs? Like, they just want to know. Mm -hmm. And so they started resurrecting all this tiki culture. And so there's all this vintage tiki shit, like mugs and whatever. And so if you can find stuff that's from the original era, it's like a big deal because it was literally kind of wiped out for a while. Huh. And it's this whole thing. And yes, it's mostly like these nerdy white people who are like, they're sort of Disney freaks. They're sort of like Star Wars freaks. Some of them are really good artists that have done like a lot of animation and stuff. Like there's a thing called Exoticon that's happening at the end of the month. I think it's in the Valley. And the guy that's running it is one of the animators for Ren and Stimpy, which is crazy. Because you, I know crazy. you watched Ren and Stimpy. I had my Ren and Stimpy <laughs> moments. So yeah, so there's all this stuff and like uh, tiki, like there's burlesque, like there's tiki exotic. There's tiki burlesque. Yeah, there's all this stuff. I've been watching. Is that not just what like a hula dance is? It's not. It's it's burlesque, huh. but it's like Asian inspired. It's a whole. I'm telling you, I've watched so many. This is a very interesting YouTube. facet of your personality. Yeah. So I if you want to go to tiki bars, I am down. <laughs> Okay. If I had to guess what your thoughts on Tiki were, <laughs> it would be white supremacy. No. Or it'd be that's kitschy. I would not have pictured you to be really into Tiki stuff. But you also love Hawaii. You're a big I Hawaii do. I mean, fan. I love Hawaii and I love like traditional Hawaii that's not been disrupted by white people. Mm -hmm. like, I love all that. I like real Hawaiian history is very, very cool. And like just everything that existed on there before white people yeah. showed up was is amazing. Uh, but... Tiki culture is fun and how it's described, this is so off topic, but it's just, it's like, I'll tie it back in. It's real escapism is what it is. Like people like 100%. it because, because you escape your life. Yeah. You know, that's why people like Star Wars. You escape your life, whatever. So, uh, when you go, there's a tiki bar in Portland called Hale Pele 
and you have to go look at their Instagram because they light their drinks. Like they don't just light their drinks on fire. They throw cinnamon on the flame to make the flame bigger. So you order like this tiki mug alcohol thing that's like 100% rum. And it has the the like half lime on top and the sugar cubes. And they come over and it's already on fire. And then they're like, okay, are you ready? And they and they go like that. And there's a flame this big that comes up. It's a total fire hazard. It's a tiny little <laughs> bar. It's awful. It's, it has massive destruction potential. <laughs> yeah. But it is so, it's so cool. so fun. And as you know, when you live in a place where it's pouring down rain and cold all the time, yeah. it's awful. I get that. And so you go there and you're like, oh, Taste There's a of the thunderstorm tropics. inside, but it's not raining. Like, and then if you go to Trader Sam's at Disneyland next to the Disneyland Hotel, it's a Disney bar, huh. and they serve alcohol and food. And if you order certain drinks, there's a whole theatrical production that happens. So there's this drink Jesus. you can order called the Krakatoa, and it of comes course. with of course it's the Krakatoa. It comes with ice cubes that light up. And if you order it, they like ring this bell and they spray like a spray bottle, make it seem like it's raining. They're like, it's a Krakatoa. And I was like, ah. See that to it's me. It's so fun. If, I feel like if I described that to you, you'd be like, that is so lame. But apparently you love it, which is wild so to me. So do you think it's lame? I think it's kitschy. I you think it's campy. So but I'm sure fun. it'd be fun. It's so fun. I get it. It's silly. Here, I'm going to tie it back in. Ready? I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie this back Do in. I'm going to watch me. Welcome you roommate to Room for Rent hosting Ben Thompson. out of coconuts. Is that what? <laughs> he would. He totally would. Yeah. No, but I remember, because you're right. It's like, it's escapist. Yes. Like that is escapism, mm-hmm. just like Star Wars is or like mm-hmm. Harry Potter is for other people. Yeah. And I remember just asking my roommate, I was just like, how do you not know anything about movies tv pop culture like how do you not know anything like did you not go to movie theaters he goes we had a movie theater but we'd never go i'm like what would you guys do he goes we'd go jump off of waterfalls mm-hmm. and it's like oh you don't have to escape yeah you have nowhere your your escape is the backyard yeah they're already in paradise like you don't yeah why would you yeah. go to a movie when mm-hmm. you go watch the sunset over the caribbean sea why would you do that so yeah i was like you know what I'm never going to give you shit. Like, it makes 100% sense. But you live by the beach where there's a sunset every night and you feel like you have to escape. Yeah, but that's just Isn't called, that funny, though? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, some form of depression, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I, lived in, when I lived where you live, I used, to run, I used to run down to the Strand and I would run, like, at sunset. Yeah. I go once a week. I was there this morning. Hmm. It's yeah, the best. It. Yeah. Whenever, because whenever I hate Los Angeles, I'm like, I gotta go to the beach, and then I go, and I'm like, yeah. this will, I'll ride this for the next week. I'm yeah. Good. But see, so often we turn to other things like TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. That's the hard thing. Mm-hmm. Like my current roommate, she's cool, but she consumes a lot of content. Like she doesn't leave her room that often. Let me ask you this: Is that how most of her conversations go? Is st- uh, did you uh, see this thing? No, I don't. I don't talk to her that much. Oh, tight. <laughs> <laughs> well, she gets up and goes to work in the morning, and I work from home, but I'm asleep still when she leaves because I don't have to work as early as she does. Okay. And then when she comes home, I leave to go do comedy. So yeah, I don't sense. see her that much. And when I do see her, she's watching shit on her iPad with headphones in. Like she's consuming content. Yeah, she's in the vortex. And it's like no judgment. A little judgment. No judgment. But like, it's a lot of, I mean, I'm on my phone a lot. I'm not on my phone that much. I'm not, I'm not on my phone that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of, but that's why like Gen Z needs to go outside mm-hmm. so badly. Yeah. I'm. A, yeah. I remember, I know when I was tutoring, I tutored this kid that like couldn't, he was an eight year old and he could not talk to me. He could not yeah. talk because he was just iPad, headphones xbox Live, like or whatever his game was yeah. roblox i think well the other thing that i find interesting is there's a lot of people who uh are like very good at their jobs very confident in their jobs socially cannot function impossible like go home sit at home eat are sad work they're great home social going out can't do it they got nothing I was the opposite. We were all the opposite. We were like, I mean, you're almost Gen Z. Like, you're young. Yeah. But I, you're not young yet. You're also kind of an old soul. But Yeah, I'm an old person. I'm 65. 
65 year olds wish they look like you. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you think Tommy likes you so much? (laughs) Because we're both 65. He's like, hang on a second. I can look like Ben. It's Um, because he did. Have you seen old pictures of Tommy? Yeah. He was a looker. (laughs) You were like, he's not that hot. He shows him to me all the time. Of course he does. Um, Shows him to me all the time. He looked great. Yeah. He was a bad boy. He was. Could you? Yeah. He thinks he he still is. (laughs) He is. He's still a bad boy Um, with his little dogs and his leather pants. No. He, does, he doesn't wear leather pants. He could, though. I'm surprised he doesn't. I'd be shocked. I am I would not be shocked doesn't. if I saw him. No, I don't, I don't think he thinks he can pull it off. This is besides the point. Uh, no one knows who Tommy is. <laughs> no. <laughs> just us. We'll have him on one day, and then we'll be like, well, yeah, this Tommy is the on. guy they're talking about? I'm just kidding. Um, but what were we talking about before that? You were, oh, escapism. Yeah, I don't know. People just need to go outside. It scares me a little. Yeah, I don't know what kids are... There's like a creativity muscle. Like the shit, like when I was growing up, we would just come up with games and sports. Like we'd find ways to entertain ourselves. And I yeah. feel like that's a really important muscle that so many kids now don't have because why would you come up with a game when you have the best game ever invented on an iPad? Like why would, yeah. why would you go out and play Cops and Robbers when you can play Call of Duty? Like why would they? I don't even blame them. But they also, like that's just a part of their brain that they don't, have. I don't know though because I think that when you are just doing like playing video games and, and this content consumption thing, you lack depth. Like your brain, you lack depth. Like as you think, your thinking process. Can like, I agree more? If you read a book, great. If you go for a walk, great. If you go outside and play, or you do whatever, or you go to a tiki convention, like things where you're just out with people. I mean, I don't know how you feel. My social skills as an adult, have developed so much through doing comedy. Yeah. Because there's such, I always tell people it's like, it's a, it's a, even though comedians are like socially awkward, it's such a heightened social skill to have to interact with comedians. And when you start talking to comedians who are at a higher level than you that have even more experience, like shooting the shit in a social atmosphere. Like when I go have conversations with normal people, I'm so much faster than they are and like quick witted. I don't, don't, do you not feel this way? <laughs> no, I do. But it's just, it's <clears throat> funny because comedians are the only people that look at social interaction and conversation as a competition. <laughs> cause, cause it is like the way you, des- the way you described having a conversation is how an <laughs> NBA player yeah. describes pickup basketball. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, when I'm in the NBA, you know, I'm a role player. But when I go to the Y, you know, I dominate. That's yeah. how you just described talking to people <laughs> normally. Yeah. Because when you're with comics, everyone, for the most part, is just doing their act. Well, and when you start comedy, everyone's like, you got to be a good hang. You better be a good hang. You're yeah, not going to get so booked on shows. Like, so you're like, I'm so much fun. Yeah, because <laughs> you're competing for friendship, yeah. which translates into spots which yeah. translates into a career yes. so yeah when you're like talking to comics it's like a competition so when you're talking to normal people you're like i'm gonna murder i'm oh, gonna yeah. i'm gonna they crush in this so conversation funny. <laughs> that i mean that's like i was telling you before we started recording these people in hawaii that thought i was famous it's so crazy and i'm like holding court at the bar <laughs> because i just know how to like crack and joke yeah and they're like you're like the funny uncle i'm like i I'm a funny woman. I don't, you know, it's like, you get to this point where it's like, it's, it's a weird compliment, right. but it is, I mean, I, my social skills, I used to be so afraid of like networking or I would go to like com- like work conference type things to try to like network and meet people to get a better job. And I would tell myself if I just talk to one person, if I could just go up and introduce myself to one person, I can leave. And I would leave not having done that because I was so afraid to like assert so you're shy? myself. I, I don't like having to like go up and be like, hey, I'm so-and-so. Who are you? And make small talk. If people come to me and they're like, hey, I'm Trisha. I'm like, oh, cool. Like I want to f- – I have to yeah, feel but- almost like special. I don't like saying that, but like – I get that. I don't like that. No, uh, yeah, small talk is so the bane shy. of my exi- – Yeah, I think yeah. it's the bane of everyone ex- ex- existence. Not everyone. Yeah, I but see those people, people are messed up. Run see, right up see, to people. Because like, those hey, people are like – covering for something you know it, it's like the dude that so desperately doesn't want to be confused as gay so they act overly straight mm-hmm. that's how real that's how social like, butterflies act, yeah, act yeah. in a social environment yeah. they're like i need to overcome my awkwardness because by pretending i'm not awkward because everyone else is looking like they're awkward yeah. when everyone is uncomfortable yeah but doing comedy and then having just a little bit of success doing it, like where you just feel like you're moving yeah, 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 moving yeah. along uh 
I don't feel that way anymore. Like I, I'll go up and introduce myself to whoever. Like nice, that's cool. Yeah. I think that happens a lot. Where yeah, yeah. Just, well, I mean, you definitely I think have done that too since I met you. Like we've all gotten better at everything. Yeah, you just get more yeah. comfortable, in yeah. it. and you just well yeah. once you bomb in front of strangers. <laughs> You know, once you call people, I've called fear. a couple people dumbass bitches from the stage. <laughs> once you do that, you feel pretty powerful. You're like, I can introduce myself to anybody. Uh, but we have to wrap this. Bummer. We're at an hour. Come I think on, Jeff. We might have to have you. Oh, you on- want to go home? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we. Oh my god. Uh, I'd love to come back. Thank you. Oh, we might much. have to have you come back because we need to hear more about the accountants. And like, got to hear more about the accountants. I've got general. another done roommate. Uh, I need to talk about. Yeah. And then my neighbors. That might be a season. Oh yeah, my might, neighbors. I, I could, love it. I could go off. Of we should neighbors. do a live pod from your apartment. Like they, if we, so if fun. we sit in the courtyard, they will come. <laughs> it's like my courtyard is the field of dreams. That would be fun. You have the setup. Yeah. Okay. If you sit in the courtyard, <clears throat> everyone will come. Okay. I got eight people at my last show. All my neighbors, because I was in the courtyard. Oh yeah, I, I was just there. I think. sat in my courtyard. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they all just came well tell people into the camera where they can find you on social media you can find me at (laughs) benjamin t thompson on instagram ben thompson comedy everywhere else and that is how you find me and everything else is what youtube uh youtube tiktok i guess facebook i have a ben thompson comedy but instagram is benjamin t thompson uh and then you can listen to gary's gary and i's after school special on Mm -hmm. uh good cooking show where you rate like nostalgic food yeah we review the the snacks that we grew up they haven't had me on yet but But you're gonna come be on the cooking show i am gonna be on the cooking show but i would like to be on the after school special show too done i'm just submitting myself on. perfect yeah i haven't even seen it but i really want to be on <laughs> i it. have seen it <laughs> i was mimicking the people that asked oh to be yeah, on yeah. i was show. like i know exactly <laughs> it pops up in my feet all the time okay so, i'm so sorry it's, about that it, it's impossible <laughs> not to watch <laughs> uh when you guys were eating sardines or something i almost unsubscribed but that was um, bad that was that bad. was disgusting yeah so thanks for tuning in you can find room for rent pod at or let's see at room for rent pod on instagram twitter tiktok facebook and that's it for social and then my youtube you can watch the whole episode uh maria Bruguer youtube and you can find me at maria Bruguer on all those same things too uh m-a-r-a-b-r-u-g-g-e-r-e for those of you who are listening uh new episodes every wednesday we love it here tune in share with your friends you could change my life maybe ben's too see you next time bye